In this chapter, we're going to focus on the following 10 key words. Eradicate, sagacious, entice, wrath, spirited, interminable, snare, dialogue, fluster, and proficient. Now let's start with the first key word, eradicate. Now if you look at this picture, you can see that the city is destroyed as all of it is on fire. So how does that relate to the word eradicate? Does eradicate have to do with the scene of destruction or with destroying a place just like that, or maybe even worse? Let's find out. Now, eradicate is a verb. To eradicate something means to get rid of it completely. For example, they are already battling to eradicate illnesses such as malaria and tetanus. And synonyms for eradicate are the words wipe out, eliminate, remove, or destroy. Eradication is the uncountable noun we use here. For example, we say, he is seen as having made a significant contribution towards the eradication of corruption. And synonyms for eradication are the words wiping out, abolition, destruction, and elimination. So, the kind of destruction and elimination or eradication does not have to be the way we saw in the picture, but it can be used with anything you want, with illnesses, with corruption, or with people and cities. So the next time you remember the picture of this destroyed city, remember the word eradicate and what it means. And now for the next key word, sagacious. Now, you look at this beautiful owl in the picture, and what we know from the symbol of the owl in many countries around the world that the owl symbolizes wisdom. So how does that relate to the word sagacious? Does it mean wise? Let's find out. Now sagacious is an adjective. A sagacious person is intelligent and has the ability to make good decisions. For example, we say a sagacious leader, which we need all the time. And synonyms for sagacious are the words wise, shrewd, astute and knowing. So the next time you remember this picture of this beautiful owl, remember the word sagacious and what it means. And now for the next key word, entice. Now obviously this is the window of a jeweler's and we have a couple watching from outside. Maybe they're planning to buy a piece of jewelry or maybe a ring, who knows. But we don't want to focus on the couple or on the jewelry. What we want to focus on is the idea of how the jewelry in this window attracts people. And if that ever relates to the word we have here, entice. Let's find out. Now, entice is a verb. To entice someone to go somewhere or to do something means to try to persuade them to go to that place or to do that thing. For example, retailers have tried almost everything to entice shoppers through their doors. And that is kind of like to attract them and try to persuade them, not force. It is not done by force, but it is done by persuasion. So the word entice has a couple of words as synonyms, and these are lure, attract, invite, and persuade. So the next time you remember this window of the jewelers and the couple, remember the word entice and what it means. And now for the next key word, wrath. Now if you look at this picture, obviously it's the picture of the same person, but the one on the right is angry, but the one on the left is actually very angry. So do you think that the word we have here, wrath, has to do with anger? Obviously it does. But let's find out exactly what it means. Now, wrath is an uncountable noun, and it means the same as anger, but it is used to express great anger, and it is used more as a literary word. For example, he incurred the wrath of the authorities in speaking out against government injustices. And synonyms for wrath are the words anger, passion, rage, and temper. So the next time you remember this picture of this angry lady, remember the word wrath and what it means. And now for the next key word, spirited. Now we look at this lady in the picture and we can see that she is working out and she's smiling, she's out there in the sun, maybe in a park or someplace. And even though she might be getting older, that does not take anything away from her spirit and she looks lively 
as if she were 16 years old. And that's great. But do you think we can call her spirited? But what is the meaning of spirited? Let's find out. Now, spirited is an adjective. A spirited action shows great energy and courage. For example, this television program provoked a spirited debate in the United Kingdom. And we can use spiritedly as an adverb. For example, we say she had talked spiritedly about her adventures. We can also use spirited to describe people. A spirited person is very active, lively, and confident. For example, he was by nature a spirited little boy. And we can think again about the lady we just saw in the picture, and definitely we can call her a spirited lady. So the next time you remember the picture of this spirited lady, remember the word spirited and what it means. And now for the next key word, interminable. Now, if you look at the picture, you can see that these people are in the middle of a meeting, but we can obviously see that they are not enjoying the meeting, not one bit. Maybe because the meeting is boring, maybe because it is taking too long, maybe both. And I'm sure you've been there when you were dragged in a meeting and your boss thought that they were talking about very interesting things, but that was very boring and it just dragged for hours and hours and you just wanted to get out. So what do we call this? Do we call this interminable? Let's find out. Now, interminable is an adjective. If you describe something as interminable, you are emphasizing that it continues for a very long time and indicating that you wish it was shorter or would stop. Like, for example, an interminable meeting, just like the one we saw in the picture. And synonyms for interminable are the words endless, long, never-ending, and dragging. And we can use interminably as an adverb. For example, he talked to me interminably about his first wife. So the next time you remember this picture with all these people sitting, enjoying their meeting so much, as you could see in the picture, they were bored to death. Remember the word interminable and what it means. And now for the next key word, snare. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see that this is a mouse trap. Well, the unfortunate mouse will get trapped in there if it eats the cheese that's put on it. But obviously we're not interested in mice or this mouse trap or maybe what happened to the finger of this unfortunate man. We are interested in the word snare. Does snare have anything to do with the idea of traps, mice or what? What does it relate to? Let's find out. Now snare is a countable noun. A snare is a trap for catching birds or small animals. It consists of a loop of wire or rope which pulls tight around the animal. So it is a specific kind of trap that we use to capture birds or small animals. But that's not all about snare. If you describe a situation as a snare, you mean that it is a trap from which it is difficult to escape. For example, worldly success could prove a snare unless used for the good of others. And snare can also be used as a verb. If someone snares an animal, they catch it using a snare. For example, he'd snared a rabbit earlier in the day. And synonyms for snare as a verb are the words trap, catch, net, and wire. And snare can also be used in a different context, also as a verb. If someone snares something, they get it in a clever way, perhaps by deceiving people. For example, police are hoping the images will help snare the gang, will help get the gang, and that is being done by a clever way to deceive the gang, which might lead to them being caught. So the next time you remember this mouse trap, remember the word snare and what it means. And now for the next key word, dialogue. Now if you look at this picture, we can see three happy people and they're enjoying their time, they're having a drink, they're eating something. But the idea that we want to focus on in this picture is not the idea of food and drinks. Maybe the idea that these people are enjoying talking to each other. Maybe they are friends and friends always enjoy talking to one another. So how does that relate to the word dialogue? Is it the conversation people have with each other? Let's find out. Now dialogue is a variable noun. Dialogue is communication or discussion between people or groups of people, such as governments or political parties. 
So this one is not exactly what we saw in the picture. It is more, it is more important on a larger scale. For example, people of all social standings should be given equal opportunities for dialogue, this kind of communication and discussion. Or we can say they have begun dialogues to promote better understanding between both communities. So again, it is conversation, it is communication and discussion, but on a larger scale, and it is usually more important on formal things, on important things. And a dialogue can also be a conversation between two people in a book, film, or play. And usually this is one of the things people use to criticize or to praise a movie, a movie that has good dialogue or bad dialogue. For example, the dialogue is amusing, but the plot is weak. Or we can say, he's a very deft novelist too, with a superb ear for dialogue. His dialogue is perfect. So the next time you remember these three people having fun talking to each other, remember the word dialogue and what it means. And now for the next key word, fluster. If you look at the picture, you can see that a person wearing a tie and suit with a briefcase rushing into action. This could be something that this person is doing on his own accord, or maybe somebody is pushing this person to hurry up. Well, which one is closer to the meaning of the word fluster? Let's find out. A fluster is a verb. If you fluster someone, you make them feel nervous and confused by rushing them and preventing them from concentrating on what they are doing. For example, the general refused to be flustered. He wanted to take exactly the time he needed to do what he wanted to do. He refused to be confused and nervous because somebody wanted to rush him. Another example, she was a very calm person. Nothing could fluster her. Nothing could make her feel nervous or confused. And synonyms for fluster are the words upset, bother, disturb, and ruffle. And we can use flustered as an adjective in this sense. So the next time you remember the picture of this man rushing into action, remember the word fluster and what it means. And now for the last key word for this chapter, proficient. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see that this man is creating pottery. And pottery is not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of time and a lot of skill to learn how to do it in the first place. And it even takes more time to do it well. And obviously, we can see from the picture that this man is teaching this boy. So we can tell that this man is skilled. He might even be a master. So. If he is a master, can we say that he is proficient? Is that related? Let's find out. Now, proficient is an adjective. If you are proficient in something, you can do it well, just like this man with the pottery. For example, a great number of Egyptians are proficient in foreign languages. And synonyms for proficient are the words skilled, trained, experienced, and qualified. So the next time you remember the picture of this man, with the pottery and this boy with him, remember the word proficient and what it means. And that's all for this chapter.